Now that you're familiar with the Nexstar remote, let's get started with the crane operation. Begin by turning on the power to the crane. Crane power is usually switched in the cab. You will know the Nexstar crane receiver has power when the status light, which is located under the boom, blinks green and yellow. You are now ready to power and link the remote. An easy way to tell when the crane has power is by looking at the indicator light on the bottom of the boom near the pedestal, which should be illuminated. All Nexstar cranes have a multicolor light on the boom to help you quickly recognize the status of the crane. The light can be steady green, meaning there are no errors and there is less than 90% capacity utilized. Steady yellow indicates 90 to 99% lift capacity and, for the safety of the operator, the crane automatically reduces to 50% speed. Steady red with an audible horn telling you that the crane is over 100% capacity or the horn is activated. Or it can be alternating green and yellow indicating an error condition is active. When the next star crane is powered but the remote is not yet linked to the crane, the status light will flash green yellow. Link the remote to the crane by first turning on the remote and then momentarily pushing up the link on off switch. Once the crane and remote are linked, a message appears on the remote LCD stating linked as well as the signal strength appearing. Additionally, the light on the crane changes depending on the status of the capacity and errors. All Nexstar cranes are equipped with an anti-bridging feature that's activated when the boom is stowed on the rest. It's normal for the crane to communicate the low boom PSI message when the boom is stowed. Lift the boom from the rest and begin to rotate the crane in the direction that unwinds the hydraulic hoses in the crane compartment. Once the crane has cleared the truck and other obstructions, lower the boom while continuing to rotate the crane and hoisting down to put slack in the wire rope. When the boom is lowered to where the traveling block is in reach, unhook the block, then continue to position the crane for the lift. Your auto crane has the most capacity with the boom position at higher angles. Positioning the truck closer to the load increases the lift capacity. Having an idea of the weight of the load you're lifting and reviewing the load chart will guide you to how close the center of the crane needs to be positioned to the truck. Remember that auto crane cranes are designed to lift the load off the side of the truck. Keep the load close to the ground when possible. Raise the load when you need to clear an obstruction or place the load in the truck bed. If the crane stops functioning, the crane controls can be manually operated. Warning, great care must be exercised while manually operating the crane control system as damage to the crane, truck, or personal injury can occur. To manually operate the crane, open the back cover on the crane by pulling the pins and lifting up and pulling back on the cover. Next, locate the directions on the inside cover. Follow the steps to manually operate the crane. First, push and hold the unloader valve by pressing the red button. This diverts hydraulic flow to the valves. Select the crane function and desired direction by using your thumb and fingers to proportionally slide the collar back on the valve stem and push or pull the valve. The further the valve is moved, the faster the function moves. When the manual operation is complete, slide the collar of the valve back to the center locking position and release the unloader valve. Stow the crane by performing the steps in reverse.
Use the blue decal alignment tabs as a visual cue to align the boom with the rest. Finally, turn off all switches that power the crane and work lights. Disengage the PTO and check that the light turns off. You are now ready and can drive off the worksite.